Chat, what's up? YouTube, what's up, man? Anybody listening to this on the SoundCloud, I appreciate you guys checking out as well. This is the Needed Podcast, episode 30, the 30 Burger. I'm saying we done been live 30 straight weeks. This is episode 30. I appreciate all you guys for coming through. The chat is already filled up, man. Uh, I appreciate all the support. I couldn't do this without you guys supporting and in fact, I'm working on a lot of sponsorships that's going to get me, you know, through the summer and in the man 20, man. Big things for me, myself, and Needed Gaming, everybody that's involved in that. We're definitely working on some big things. And, and I tell people about Madden all the time. Uh, it's easy to do it when there's a lot of eyes on Madden, man. When your streams are popping, when your videos are popping. But it's the people that put in the work in the offseason that really prepare themselves for a good Madden 20, man. I feel like this is where a lot of the work is done. And also a lot of the work is neglected. So I appreciate all the support that I have even throughout these even throughout these slow months from you guys, man. That's really what I appreciate, really what uh is going to continue to keep this thing rolling. And I hope this I when I start first started the podcast, I didn't think it would be this amazing. I didn't think it would get this much support, but now I see it's it's gonna continue to roll. It's gonna keep getting better and better and be a staple in the man community. So this is a uh, really promising outlook for me man and as far as promising outlooks clef man one friday night football man i really don't talk about friday night football enough on here but when my man clef uh sweeps the competition and dominates again i have to bring it up uh clef really is the second best man player in the world right now i really think i'm the only one that can knock him off uh i I, i'm the only one that can get in his head mentally otherwise he's just wiping the floor with these children and so we'll be interesting to see this Friday if Clef is able to go ahead and get another go back to back on Friday night, man. So definitely something I'll be watching. And speaking of Friday night football, man, in about a month, I think a month, directly a month from now, I will be commentating. I don't know who I'll be commentating with, but Mudhead did extend the invitation to myself to come down there and commentate. So hopefully I can make it that much more exciting. Uh, I'm not going to be bugs on the mic, man. It's not going to be a boring session. We're not going to be talking about wheatgrass and, and things of that nature. So in about a month, I will be down there uh, and really having a good time with Friday Night Football. And Friday Night Football, Friday Night Football would be, uh, honestly, has become something really cool and re- something we could all look forward to every week. Uh, and I think as much as Mutthead has been amazing, and it has with the leagues and all, we're really starting to see that Madden is more of a tournament thing than a league thing. I mean, the leagues were super uh, successful for Mutthead, but at the end of the day, it was all about the playoffs. You know, and that's kind of how the tournament is just one tournament. Everybody's trying to get into it, and it's really working well the way they lay it out and the way they they sponsor and everything. And um, so that's going to be a good time. Um, uh, uh, Another thing I want to talk about, speaking of commentating, I know, man, it's kind of developing as the G League or the, um, you know, D League or the minor league, triple, triple A ball. But C4 this weekend has their final competition, their final grand championship. This is in the Foxwood Casinos. Of course, Vilma, the Thanos of C4 will be competing. I'm not sure who the other people are that are in it. But I actually, as far as that's concerned, I got I got an extended invitation to come and commentate that up in Connecticut with Larry Ridley. And, and so I will be commentating that entire event on Sunday. So if you, if you not only you want to watch some decent Madden, uh, you get to hear me commentate and talk shit about Vilma mostly and whoever else he's playing, man. So it should certainly be a good time. If anybody's in the New, New England area, please check it out, man. That Foxwood Casino is is worth the, the trip. If you're an hour away, two hours away, you can make a day trip out of it, gamble, all types of food, clubs, bars, everything. Foxwood Casinos is definitely worth the trip, and that's for sure, man. So it's definitely going to be a good tournament. I'm excited about that, and I'm excited about this podcast because, I mean, the, the, the little bit of news of Man 20 has been out. It has really been out for a while now. That's one thing that... um. And I feel that I haven't been able to talk about it because we had Matt and Bull to talk about. Last week we talked, what did we talk about last? Last week was the awards for the whole season. Really didn't get a chance to really narrow down and talk about um, this X Factor stuff, what they're doing with the attributes and, and things like of that nature because, like I said, because, uh, I mean, we had other topics to talk about. It's not all been, 
about you know the gameplay for Madden 20. And I'm assuming in the next two months, a lot of these podcasts are going to be geared around Madden 20, talking about Madden 20 and how it pertains to us. That's pretty much what it's going to come down to because this this is about this podcast has always been about competitive Madden. Uh, and how it relates to the rest of the world. We all have come to the conclusion that it's such a small minority of men, but I will talk about how these different, you know, things looking forward in the game can uh, affect the competitive community. Also in the podcast today, man, I'm going to talk, I'm going to make a list of my top 10 MCS players in the MCS era. This is about three and a half years, man, a full man 19, full man 18, full man in 17, and about half a year of men 16. So calculating all that into, I'm going to make a top 10 list. Uh, it was hard not to put myself number one, but I did get passed by uh, one or two people. But in all seriousness, I mean, the things I really uh, took into account for this list were uh, money won. I think that's pretty much ultimately the number one thing put in. Championships, consistency, and, and runs, man. You got to have some good runs. Uh, it's a lot of people that have great runs but don't necessarily have all the money or don't necessarily have a championship. So all the thing factors into it. Uh, at this point, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can kind of agree who the top three players are. But after that, I mean, it's pretty much all for your what you think is more impressive. And I'll talk into that. You guys can give me feedback if you're watching this live, man. If you don't check out these podcasts live, twitch.tv slash dub dot. The link is below. You guys can uh, watch this on Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, every single Tuesday. This is the 30th straight Tuesday. We have talked about competitive men to some extent. And like I said, we'll go back to the X of the, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, we're going to go back to the X factors. Now, from what I took from this, and I, I hopefully I'll try to get to this right here. This, um, here we go. Where am I at? Right here. Boom. We're going to try to get, this is Clint, and this is actually pretty dope that they do this. I've always said I wish uh, the Madden community, uh, always wish that the Madden community is going to, uh, or not the Madden community, but EA is going to put more effort as far as Twitch is concerned. Because the more people that tune into Twitch, the bigger Twitch can get as far as Madden's concerned. So I'm happy that EA has put, I feel like they've put a decent effort into Twitch this year on their end. Whether it be the Mutt Daily Drops or these new shows, that we can really get into and really are excited about to hear about Madden 20. Because at this point, you either hate Madden 19, you're done playing Madden 19, you're bored of it, or you're just, we're all ready for Madden 20. And we might have been ready for Madden 20 in November. Whatever time of the year you're ready for Madden 20, we all are right now. So it's dope to go ahead and uh, be able to look forward and see some things coming in the game. So I appreciate Clint and, and obviously Kralo organizing all these things. And uh, this one was about the new X Factor thing they put in the game. Now, for me, X Factor was directly, um, I think, directly a result or some of it. Uh, we'll see. How X Factor is kind of what every player has. And then they have an in the zone ability. Now, the in the zone ability was a direct pull, I believe, from 2K because that's what 2K was this year. The takeover badge, man. If you guys play 2K, a lot of man players play 2K. The takeover badge, I feel like. Um, the, the zone ability is exactly what takeover is, you know, and, and we'll see, I, I, we didn't get too many details from this particular stream, but we'll see as the time goes on what these zone abilities all entail and how to counter all of them, how easy they are to obtain and how hard they are to stop once they get, um, once they get going. And for me, I, I do think this relates directly to the conversation I had with Rex. If you haven't watched that, that's on YouTube and SoundCloud as well. Uh, that he talked about EA just wanting to put new features in the game to make the game sound more exciting, to get the game more have more eyes and more new people buying the game. He said that EA felt like, uh, you know, the casual, super casual player probably buys a man every three years or two years or so on and so forth. And they want to continue to get that player, get some new players playing the game. And that's why they put these type of features in the game. As directly why they put these type of features in the game to get people to buy the game. It sounds new. It sounds exciting. And as much as that might just be a plea for marketing, I, it probably is a plea for marketing. It's exciting to me. As much as I want to hate on it and say they just do this to get new. It's pretty damn exciting for me. And, and the easy thing to do is hate and say these things are going to suck. They do sound like red chems on steroids. A lot of, a lot of the complaints this year were with red chems were a little overpowered. This sounds like red chems on steroids. You know, that's pretty much what it sounds like. 
Uh, so to me, that's pretty much what it is. And I forget the part where. And with that comes diversifying gameplay strategy. All right. So essentially what I'm saying is they put these X Factor abilities in the game to make stars feel like stars. For me, I feel like the attributes should do that. You know, like the, there should be a difference in the attributes. And that's something also that they put out earlier. That the attributes are going to be so widespread this year that it's going to be a bigger difference. Like there should be a substantial difference between Tom Brady and Russell Wilson. As much as Russell Wilson say he's top five quarterback, whatever you may say, he might be top ten. Whatever your opinion is on Russell Wilson, he's very good, yes. But he's not Tom Brady, and there should be a big difference on the way they throw the ball. And I shouldn't have to have a ability to really make Tom Brady that much better than Russell Wilson. But at the same time, one of the complaints that every field of man has, whether it's sim players, whether it's competitive players, CFM players, is that you know, it always sucked when you know, the best players were just fat, tall, and fast guys. It always felt like it sucked like that, man. And, you know, the players like Doug Baldwin, like Julian Edelman, you know, like Eric Weddle. People that are good in real life but don't have the physical attributes to be great in Madden aren't good in Madden. Madden has always been dominated by the Derrick Browns, the Pat Watkins, uh, the Matt Jones on the Jaguars, the fast running backs without, you know, carry and spit, whatever it may be, is always dominated by the physical freaks. And one thing about this X Factor thing is that I feel like it's going to make the best players in the NFL better on Madden. But at the same time, I feel like they have already been gearing to that way. They've been using these thresholds to kind of make good players in real life good on the game. You know, the, the, the terrible DB that's six four that's fast, but his ratings are bad, isn't that good on the game? And remember last year, Eric Weddle was one of the best safeties early in the year just because he had 91 zone. So you, there really is a, a relation in the good players that are Madden are good in real life. And that kind of started in Madden 18, the last two years with the thresholds, with the ratings really mattering. So I think they've been on the right path to getting the best players in real life to translate onto the game. You know, and I, I think the attributes, spreading out the attributes, starting a player with 50 route running or, you know, what can I say, 50 awareness or 44 play recognition. I think this is a smart move as far as uh, diversifying how good a great player is and, and how bad just a body is. Like a body won't get you by anymore. You can't just have somebody tall and fast on the outside. And um, the thre thresholds, I, I think are good and they, they talk about the spin move is pretty much the biggest threshold we had this year and the spin move is a uh, 82 82 on all man you could spin and to me that is why the spin is overpowered this that's great spin move where we hold both triggers directionally spin i think is great in man i really do but personally i think you should have to have 96 spin to be able to do that so only the McCoys, the Barry Sanders, maybe Walter Payton, or somebody really elusive that really can pull those type of moves off in real life can be able to do it. The problem with the spin is not the spin. It's just that everybody can do it. You know, it's kind of ridiculous that we have tight ends that can do spin moves like LaShawn McCoy. I think that was the biggest problem with the spin move, honestly. And uh, that's where it is. And But... Ultimately, they have made good players in real life good on the game. And that has always been a complaint for man players for, for the longest. And they are definitely going down their angle to make every player that's kind of good in real life be effective on Madden. It's not necessarily always about speed and height now. It really, the ratings matter. And the, the further they get down that line to where the ratings matter more and more and more, and the, the more they make the ratings vastly different, the better... Man, a player like Malcolm Jenkins, who's my favorite player, can really stand out. He's kind of been kind of trash in Madden, in the history of Madden. He's been kind of trash because he's slow, not that tall, doesn't hit hard. But the more they make the ratings matter, the better his card will play. So I think, I think spreading out the ratings will be a great thing, but there's some things I don't think should be spread out. And that's really the physical part of, of the ratings being spread out. If we go from... Uh, 
I I personally, when I watch football, there's there's a few players in the league I think are that much faster than everybody else. Obviously, Tyreek Hill, I thought Deshaun Jackson was very fast when he was on the Eagles five, six, seven years ago. Uh, and, and there's certain players that really stand out, man. If you if you guys can think of a player that when you watch football, for me, I'll tell you, Tyreek Hill, obviously, but Devin Hester was probably from, on the field watching a player play. I thought Devin Hester was the fastest player I've ever seen. Uh, and, and there's players like that. And, and you guys can comment below on which one you want in the chat. Tell me what players did you watch and was like, that guy is that much faster than everybody else in the NFL. Because for me, it wasn't that many players. I feel like between corners, D- DBs, wide receivers, I feel like they're all kind of similar physically, speed and height and, and strength. You know, and I think uh, I think as far as the physical things, I don't think there needs to be – Tyreek Hill doesn't need to be 97 speed and then come around and have Julian Edelman with 82 speed. I don't think that's the way to go physically. Same thing as throw power. I don't think Mahomes should have 98 throw power – then Brady have, you know, 79 though power. So as far as the physical things, I think the attribute should be a little closer. But as far as the mental things and being able to play the game, that's where you should see the giant separation in the attributes. Like Brady should have 99 awareness, Russell Wilson down 79, you go Mahomes 74, and you go with, you know, Daniel Jones on the Giants 42 awareness because it's rookie. I want to see a difference in these ratings. Not necessarily the physical ratings. And the X factor seems like, one, the back of the box things to sell ratings and another way to separate the great players from average players, which could be really good. You know, I I really, I don't want to sit here and bash it because I I haven't played it. It could be awesome. And and it sounds like Red Chem's on steroids. But if there's a Red Chem, they counter a Red Chem, and then they, they, boom, at some point there's going to be, we're going to get back to that random generated number thing and, We'll see how it works. We really don't have enough information about it. It's just something I'm I, I'm very excited about to play, to try it. I wasn't going to go to EA Play this year. I had went to EA Play, paid my own way to go to EA Play the last two years. I'm really not interested in it. And part of the reason last year was that Madden was such as just like a discarded feature in this whole. And it's kind of like a, a a festival for video games for EA. And Madden was just kind of just as like, we, we know, Madden was kind of like, we know my fan base is going to be here. We don't need to promote it. We're going to put it in the corner. Like, it's, it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a high priority. So, for me, it was like, why am I out here? You know, and, and so, wasn't, didn't plan on going to EA Play at all. But, I mean, I would definitely go because I am interested in checking out this, uh, this X Factor ability. So, um... And then we talk about the zone. Like I said, the zone abilities to me are directly from EA's takeover. And those are another things that are a little bit goofy to me in that I don't think I don't think um all of a sudden now Patrick Mahomes can throw the ball 80 yards. I feel like his arm strength is his arm strength regardless. You know, whether he's having a terrible game or he's hit 25 passes in a row, he can still throw the ball the same way. So I think all of a sudden giving somebody steroids and being able to just be stronger, faster, whatever it may be, I don't know if that's the best move. I I, I think I've always felt that way. Uh, I don't think a player physically should be boosted. I think mentally and as far as accuracy, yeah, that'd be cool. And uh, But as far as being able to throw the ball further all of a sudden in the middle of the game, I think he can throw the ball the same way every single time he tries to throw the ball. But... We have to remember that it's a video game, and this could be really fun to play, uh, mix match, and some of these things might have strategies involved. Like if Patrick Mahomes takes ten straight completions to get some, you know, rocket arm or bazooka runner or scrambler, whatever it may be, whatever Yu-Gi-Oh power Patrick Mahomes is going to have, it takes ten completions. Man, now all of a sudden we might mix in a couple screen passes. We might mix in some more hitches. We might throw some more drags. We won't necessarily take that risk on a deep pass. Because I have six straight completions, I need four more. You know, and defensively, you could think that way too. Like, okay, he has five straight completions. I can't let him get another completion. So let's go ahead and play super aggressive. And once you get that incompletion, bang, now it it changes the game. And and that's some of the things that will maybe expand the strategy. And there might be different strategies for every single position. It could be something really awesome. It could be really well done if they do it the right way. 
And for me, we talked about, I mean, a lot of this goes back to the Rex podcast and, and that Madden doesn't have that many people working on it. It doesn't have that much, you know, room for error, so to say. Like, so we all know how much error we're in, you know, the gameplay this year as far as animations, contains, coaching adjustments. So instead of fixing those things, you know, we spent the time implying, uh, implementing this new feature, X Factor, Zone, whatever it may be. So they took these 30, 40 people, instead of fixing the old problem, let's put a new feature in the game. So we know this new feature in the game is going to be kind of bugged out. It's just natural. You put out a video game in six months, it's going to be bugged out. For sure, 1,000%. So now, not only do we are we still going to deal with some of the problems from the past generation, now we're going to have this new system that's probably going to have uh, probably got some new um, some new bugs to deal with. So that's going to be an obstacle that they're dealing with, uh, and, and from here on out. So it's definitely going to be tough for them guys to to just handle it all with the with the lack of, you know, with the lack of um, people to have working there per Rex as we talked about. Uh, so EA Play should be fun just for this feature alone. I'm really excited for the next couple streams that they do. Uh, like I said, it sounds like it sounds like Red Chem's on steroids, and I'll be interested to see. Chet, I will be interested to see. Um, this is that. You know how this year you could have every like Michael Vick could have every quarterback Red Chem. It didn't really matter anything about your your quarterback's attributes. He could have every Red Chem. Am I thinking every quarterback in Mutt is going to have, be able to have every superstar X Factor? Like, can I put pocket pass on Michael Vick? Or will there be an attribute, you know, threshold? And, oh, excuse me. Will it be a threshold to get these different type of X Factors? You know, can I put Scrambler on Tom Brady and all of a sudden he can throw crazy on the run and get a little speed boost? Are there going to be options for me to really mix and match these X Factor abilities to really boost up my players also are we going to have these x-factor abilities and regular red chems you know am i going to have lawrence taylor without the way fear monger and, and tip drill whatever how how many Yu-Gi-Oh gems can i put on my cards this is something that we're probably all thinking about and uh maybe x-factor will get rid of red red chems that we're used to and just be x-factors you know so definitely a lot of questions to be answered down the line uh and it's definitely going to be something that I'm looking forward to hear from. And I hope you guys are looking forward to as well, man. So we'll definitely see what they have. I, I, I said before, I really appreciate these videos with Clinton Kralo. Kralo really doing a good job as always at everything he's pretty much always done. So that's definitely a good thing, man. So, so they, Tiski said they did say all the red chems from the past are going to be gone. So no more tip drill. Conductor is probably some field general thing. Is there going to be a threshold on that? You know, are we going to be able to turn, you know, Michael Vick into a field general? So we're definitely going to uh, see more and more just unfolded. Uh, hopefully it just it works well, man. I'm excited for the new game. I'm excited for something new to play. And it, I, I personally think it could be very good. If it's executed the right way, even if it's super cartoony, for me, video games are fun. That that's what makes that's what makes them play video games. You know, for fun. You know, I've I've never been playing Madden and said, "Wow." I've never been the type to say, "Wow." He doesn't. His cleats don't look like real life, or the stadium doesn't look good, or the way he do the ball look goofy. I mean, I've had fun playing the most cheesy, arcadey, cartoon Madden games ever. So even if this is super cheesy Yu-Gi-Oh type thing, if it's fun, man, and it's competitive, it, it's going to be a good thing. You know, so before I try it and before we play it and play it for a couple weeks, it's hard to really say that it's going to be terrible. But it's definitely looking like just red chems on steroids. And that, that's cool. If it works, I mean, it's going to be great. Uh, we'll see how it's executed. That's going to be the way to go. Um, So that was the first thing I want to talk about was the X Factor. Man, if you guys comment below on anything you want to hear about X Factor or anything you think about X Factors, man, because your comments are very important. Chat. Obviously, uh, you guys are the most important thing is the chat. Uh, over 100 people in here right now. Twitch.tv slash dub that talking about X Factor. 
understanding uh, what it's going to mean, kind of guessing what's going to happen, you know, because we took this this little half hour stream with Clint and Craylo and and really it helped a lot. It really cleared up some things and we're taking it, you know, with our opinion and trying to figure out what it's going to mean. So I appreciate you guys. <sighs> so my next topic I want to get on, and this is something that I, I really put a lot of thought into. Uh, this is probably the most I prepared for a podcast since I've been in, in episode 30. This is the most I have prepared. Uh, the most I have prepared so far for a podcast. And that was my top 10 MCS players in the history of the MCS. It's been three and a half years. Uh, and there's been a lot of mad. You know, I looked at a list. Drenny, actually, I was talking to Drenny about it earlier. And we talked about, or he sent me a bunch of pictures that he had and rankings uh, about, you know, money, uh, games won, games played, final appearances. And a lot of what I did was just off the top of my head. And um, it's definitely a lot of things to talk about, uh, a lot of different things to debate amongst us, chat. And I hope you guys help us out, man. Because I need you guys' input as far as, you know, do you agree with my list? Who would you have differently? I mean, what is a bigger factor in the criteria of a list, man? What's more important to you guys? Money one, championships, you know, how many runs have you had? What's your best finish? How many total games? How many total events have you made? I mean, what's most important to you? And we're definitely going to dive into that. And we're going to bring up, I made my top 10. And before I make my top 10, I really want to say that, you know, this it's impossible to do these top tens without talking about uh true boy and spot me. Uh, first of all, I, I said it rest in peace to those guys, man. Those guys were huge competitors. Those guys were, um, great Madden players. And, and they're not really thinking about it between Madden 18, 17, 19. It, it was hard to find live events without those guys in them. And, and those guys definitely, you know, were definitely in consideration for places on the top 10, they both had had great careers in the MCS. Both were household names pretty much for anybody that followed competitive men. And they are truly missed, man. And, and it's to the point where I, I think some of these events should be named after them. Whether it be the Madden Classic, be be True Boys Tournament, and then maybe the Madden Challenge be Spot Me. You know, I really think something like that really should be... Uh, really should be named after those guys. Because they were such a big part going through this list their names kept popping up both of them have made a lot of money and a lot of impact and those guys will surely be missed and i i'm going to talk about them as this list goes on and um let's take a look at this right now man this is my now we can go with this right away now if you're looking on if you're watching on or you're listening on soundcloud checking on youtube this was the all-time money list. This was before the Man Bowl, I believe. Now, I, I will tell you that... Oh, man. It's hard not to say the money's the most important thing. You know, I, I really... It's hard not to say that. Because if that's your opinion that money is all that matters, you know, it, it's hard to really argue with that. Because it's, it's a huge, important thing. But at the same time, you take a guy like Skimbo, who obviously is the top of the list. But he won two tournaments where where he won two belts. I believe two belts combined were $55,000. Two belts combined in the back-to-back -to -back Madden Classic. So just the, the weight of the money isn't the same. So it's, at some point, it's hard to say that... Uh, that money is all that matters when talking about the top 10 MCS. You know... And, and sad because it's a good point. Skimbo has competed all four years. He's been successful all four years. Some of these guys like Drenny, and I believe Kiv only had three years. Drenny only has two years. Pavin with just two. Uh, and so on and so forth. So some people do have longer careers, you know. And and that, that hurts the youth. It does hurt the youth. I mean, but it, you can't ignore it. You can't say pound for pound. You still have to factor in those two years that Skimbo had over Drenny or Skimbo had over Pavin because they, they, ultimately they count. And the longer the sample size we get, if we get the 10 years at MCS, then it will even out for the players that were too young prior to uh, the age changing and all that. Donnie in the chat, my guy, there he is. 
but yeah, I, Kid was four. I don't remember um him doing a lot in Man Sixteen. Man Sixteen for me was definitely a, probably the the hardest one for me to remember. Uh, as far as final eights, final sixteens, final fours, that was the hardest one for me to remember. Um, I, and I apologize for that. Uh, for me to remember, man, sixteen. I remember the belts, obviously, and the championship games, obviously. But, um, like I said, man, sixteen was the hardest to remember, and, and it was two tournaments. Uh, the first one was a little was half an invitational tournament where half the half the bracket got invited, which was really smart. Uh, at the time, as a competitive player that was just coming up, grinding, you know, with no name, I, it upset most of us because it's like, why the hell did you just invite those guys? But now, just for people to watch, just for people to be enticed and, and to know, watch those guys play against other competition, that was a great idea, and it worked out, man. So, um, But this is the money list, and, and with the money list, I... Uh, I definitely, I definitely factored in a lot into my list. It definitely was important, and uh, I'll talk about it for each player as we go on. And I will tell you my list. Number ten was my hardest choice, by far my hardest choice. And number ten came down to uh, Joke or True Boy. Now I will tell you first of all, both great players. Can nothing be taken away from any of these guys? Um. True Boy was probably the most unique player on the circuit, and uh, he was very good. I personally think Joke had Joke has one of the most underrated, consistent man. He's been consistently good, if that makes sense. You know, he's just been making tons of live events, whether it be Madden uh, 17. I don't know about Madden 16. I really, honestly, don't remember that much. But Madden 17, he made the first one. Made the Man Bowl. I don't think he made the Man Challenge, but obviously made the Final Four in the Man Championship. I really believe that Joke, and Joke is my number ten player. He's number ten on my list, and the reason it was hard for me not to put True Boy here because True Boy, I guarantee you, Joke has had a better on paper, a better career than True Boy. But True Boy always kicked the shit out of Joke when they played. So for me, that was the hardest thing for me that wanted me to put True Boy here at number ten. But Joke just had a, such a consistent career, had one finals appearance, that final four in the Madden Championship just has yet to take home that belt. With all his consistency and all the events that he made, one belt would put Joke into five, four, even three territory, honestly, with how successful he has been in the Madden, uh, in the MCS era. Also, for him to have $100,000 and not have a belt is pretty damn impressive. And, you know, that just speaks to the consistency and even in his final, in the final that he made against Skimbo, I don't think it was that much money. Uh, so to me, I believe the final versus Skimbo, he might have made eighteen thousand, maybe twenty thousand, just off the final. So for him consistently making some decent money, he's definitely had a good career. So that's why I chose to put him in number ten. But it definitely was the toughest decision. I didn't want to split it. I hate when people make lists and put ten A and ten B. Whatever, maybe yeah, journey. So his fine when he made the finals of a tournament, he just made fifteen thousand dollars. So that's definitely low, and that shows you that all the other tournaments combined, he definitely made what eighty five thousand off his places, off his runs. Probably the second most he's made was probably that final four in the man championship. If you guys remember, it was against Problem where he gave up two kick returns. Otherwise, he would have been in the finals versus Skimbo, and Skimbo didn't want to play him. So if Joke had not given up kick returns to problem, he could have that Madden, champ- Madden 17 championship. So he definitely uh, he definitely made a, a great run in that Madden championship. Um, but yeah, so between it was between True Boy and Joke for this. Joke just made a little bit more money, made some more events, and a little bit deeper runs between that one finals appearance and that final four. Uh, but it was definitely tough between True Boy and... Um, Joke, but I went with joke. Number eight, or number nine, I believe this is the person where I went to. I, I hope this all works out for me. But number nine, I got Pavin. Tough to put Pavin. We talked about consistency, but my man is over the 120. I think maybe even 130k now. You know, it's been two years for him. He didn't do much in Madden 17 or Madden 18, just winning the Raiders Club Series. 
But uh, for him to win probably the biggest tournament of the year this year, also make the man challenge and do pretty decent in the man bowl, making it out of groups. I think between that, the money he's won already and a belt is just enough to put him on this list. Uh, he's probably had obviously had the least live events of anybody on this list, but uh, just the money between the money and the championship, I think he has to be on this list. Uh, obviously, the other people you can do on here, True Boy is somebody that maybe you could argue over Pavin, but just that championship and the money is just overwhelming. So for me, I got Pavin at number nine. Chad, I don't know if you guys, I mean, I don't think he's going to be any higher. I don't think you're going to argue he's going to be any higher. Uh, I think this is a decent spot for Pavin to be at, number nine on the list. Uh, I think he's earned that in the last, in this year, and a little bit of a run last year, winning the Raiders Club Series. But I, I, he'll be the first to tell you that he's much improved this year, and the sky's the limit for this kid. I mean, they're talking about somebody that wasn't able to compete in 16 and 17, and for him to just really take off this last year, I mean, he's going to continue to dominate, continue to make events, and he's going to probably be in his top 10 list long after I'm removed from it. So definitely have Pavin right here. Uh, and number eight is probably probably the most consistent player without a belt. And number eight, I have Blocky. Um, Blocky has made, I want to say, how many Final Fours? I think four Final Fours between Club Series this year, uh, the Madden Championship last year. I want to say the Madden Classic this year. And I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm really not sure how many more Final Fours. But I'm talking about a player in the last two years has, has been beyond solid. He He's pretty much been a dominant force in the MCS for the last two years. And I will tell you... Um, I will tell you that even in Madden 17 and Madden 16, he was definitely... Uh, a great player. So and for him to have the success in the last two years in the MCS, once again, another player over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. I will tell you guys, who are you putting blocky over? I just watch the list and you tell me per what person you put him over. That's all. Number eight, like I said, blocky really consistent. Uh, definitely had, a uh, been, been dominant for the most part. Just got to get over that hump, put one or two games back together. Um, and it will definitely be a, he can move up the list. But another player that hasn't won, I will tell you, listen, when you guys see the other seven, their chat, YouTube, the chat is telling me block is just too low for Blocky. Okay. And I can tell you the only, I might be the only player you could argue that you could put me over me, but I'm saying he's definitely been, uh, he, he's been good, but just hasn't won the belt. Has I don't even think he's made a finals. I think he's lost in the final four every time, but he's been a, uh, well, no, Blackie's not the best without a belt, but we'll continue to look at this list. Like I said, he's number eight. Great thing. Like I said, great player. Just got to, just got to finish the job. Like he's, he's in there in it to win it. He just got to finish. He's a player. If Blackie had won one of those, he's automatically third or he's fourth or so on and so forth. You know, uh, here we go. And number seven, rest in peace. Spot me, please. Spot me, please. And, and I t honestly, I didn't. I, I had spot me probably around 11 or 12. And I, I actually talked to Skimbo about this. um, About spot me. And, and I had just remembered spot me um, winning his belt. Winning a man classic uh, when he first won his belt. So this is, we're talking about a belt winner. Also... People forget final four in the man, just like joke final four, I believe in the man championship, the one joke, uh, what you call it? Joke lost the problem. He made, uh, what else I want to say made the ultimate league last year, man classic. His, his resume really is underrated. Honestly. Uh, like I said, has a championship close to a hundred thousand dollars. I'm not sure. I gotta go check. Mr. Donnie, the super list. Journey had to send me the super list today, but he's made a lot of money. And this is where I wish I had like the exact, exact finishes, but he's actually had a really underrated career outside of winning a belt. You know what I'm saying? So, so I definitely think, I, I definitely think spot me deserved a spot. Where's he at? 
Yeah, ninety five thousand dollars. Spot me, please, is made in Madden. So, so it definitely was a good amount of money with the belt. I'm saying so to me. That's where I had spot me. Uh, tremendous career. Another person. I mean, life cut short. Obviously, rest in peace. I can't say it enough. I try to wear one of these t-shirts every single day because it, it is it is one of the biggest uh, concerns of my life that these guys get more attention because not only were they great man players, they were friends of all of us. So, uh, but I, I really thought it really did not resonate to me how successful he really was. You know, so he had tons of other runs other than uh, just winning a belt. So to have a belt, 95,000 and another final four and a final eight, definitely solid. That's why I have him over Blackie. Uh, The the belt alone pretty much puts him this high. And and the next player I got, number six, I have Ghost. I have Ghost um, not only for winning... The club championship last year. That that was really solid. But then we got to turn around and Ghost made the final four of the club championship this year. You know, so to, so to almost come that close to repeat in probably the hardest tournament of the year. And, you know, and then also made the man challenge this year. Made the final six or whatever it may be or the final. He made playoffs in Ultimate League. And, and I definitely think Ghost, um, Ghost is, should be high on this list. And if you think about Ghost, man, even as much as uh, I don't want to get into a what-if thing because it's a lot of what-ifs for a lot of players, but Ghost missed hella field goals to make live events in Man 17. Missed hella field goals all over. <laughs> like, Ghost could have made a lot more money and, and had a, a bigger uh, impact in the MCS uh, than he did if he just tightened up a couple things, man. And, and I think we all say Ghost is one of the best players. Ghost is one of the best players, um... Uh, in the last three years, you know, whether it be 17, 18, or 19, Ghost is one of the best. And to win the hardest tournament or the biggest tournament last year, I don't, I don't want to think it was bigger than Ultimate League, but it was a huge tournament, the club championship. I believe Ghost only won 30K for this belt. And uh, and then to come Final Four again this year, make the man challenge this year. He didn't have the run he wanted in the man challenge, but to, to make a Final Four, make another event this year, and have the big win last year, I think Ghost is definitely pretty, uh, I'm definitely on this list. Number five, I'm number four, I'll tell you that right now. Number five is Problem. You know, Problem, I put, and it can't, this is what it comes down to, I think four and five is me and Problem, whatever way you look at it. That's how I see it. And, and to me, it ultimately just comes down to, I have a championship and, you know I'm saying, and Problem has, Four finals, you know, which is pretty good. Obviously, it's great. Um, uh, the money he's close to two hundred thousand dollars, and that's without winning shit this year. And I think I believe he got twenty five hundred this year. So he made a little bit of money this year. Um, problem is definitely uh, definitely been very consistent. I I think I want to say the salary cap events have been his best. Um, obviously losing the stiff. Losing to Skimbo, losing to me and those three and the other one and goals. So the all salary cap events, the one thing about problem, the salary cap events, he's been dominant. Uh, and, and shoot, if it's just salary cap, he, he might even be higher. But uh, the one thing, and, and this is just the prettiest thing is me or problem who has had better four years. Uh, the one thing, I mean, I guess it really doesn't matter, but I have done differently well in all the different events. Uh, not necessarily just one. I don't know if that's a plus. I don't even know. if I, It probably doesn't even matter. I mean, the money doesn't really matter to mold. But uh, problem, like I said, you can't. And this is where it comes down to. Is it about the money or is it about the championship? You know, and that's pretty much what it comes down to. Uh, it's just all your opinion. Of course, I'm going to put myself because I'm just slightly biased because it is myself. So, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, so to me, it's like. Uh, at, I wouldn't be mad if you put problem higher because money at the end of the day, he is, I believe, second highest. I don't know if that's still after Madden Bowl. Uh, let's take a look at what the list is. I, I believe he's second. Kiv might be over him. Yeah, Kiv has surpassed him, but still to have about 190K without winning a belt is really high. So it just comes down to do you want the money or do you want the championship? Uh, and that's pretty much what it is. And we'll see. Go ahead. Uh, 
So, problem at five, four, it's got to be me. And obviously, I'm the greatest player to ever walk the earth. And so, I could have been higher, but I didn't want to make this show about me. But, no, in all honesty, chat, um, I have a championship. I'm probably, to this day, was probably the biggest man tournament of the MCS. Uh... Um, and that that and, and the one thing I will take, uh, no matter if I ever win another game, man, I beat the two best man players in the world. Uh, I beat the two best man players in the world in my final four, and and, and then I beat Hollywood, who was the the best player at the time. Uh, we won seventy five thousand for this belt, seventy two after fines, uh, seventy two after fines. Only player to get fined by EA. Uh, I'm, I really am a legend. But honestly, like I said, I did beat the two best players in the world. Uh, and that's something I, to this day, like, I did the two best players in the world. Then I made the man challenge the next tournament. Then I made the man championship. Got out of groups in that, barely. So after this, man 17, I didn't do too much. Come back, man 18. Made the first live event on the online. The on, Dude, I, I will tell you to me. Playing an online Madden Classic and Madden 18 and making the live event of that was probably the happiest I had been in Madden. Uh, probably the hardest and toughest f fights that I've had in the Madden Classic and Madden 18. Wound up going 3-0 in my group, making that Final Four, losing the joke on Sheldon Richardson interception. And I believe I got picked off by a defensive lineman. And joke accepted an offsides call on my computer to get in field goal range. That's a game I wish I could have back. Of all the games in MCS, that's the one I wish I could have back to go to another finals. I would have killed Skimbo. Uh, but so to make the final four in the next event. And this was the year, if you guys remember, Man 18, it was only eight people that made live events. You know, so so picture a live clubs. We talk about clubs. It was, and for me, I, I had to make a decision as far as what making a live event meant in clubs. And to me, I think we got to come up with some room. Does winning a cl winning your club alone, making that final 32, is that does that equal a live event? Or does making final 16 in a tournament, does that equal making a live event? You know, because this year, the one thing about it was it was definitely so tough to make live events this year. It was it, it, because it was only eight people. So four for so four for each system. And what's crazy about the Madden Classic online, four people were already at the event. So there was only two people per console that made this event, so Madden Classic, Madden 18. So for me, you had to win one game of online elimination. I played franchise. Then you had to go to groups, get out of groups. Then you had to. I had to play three more rounds of single, single elimination in which I beat Short Texas Goon. And then I beat Prodigy. Then I beat Blocky to go to the live event. So for me, making that first live event was hard as shit. And I'll tell you guys that to... Um, so essentially, if making I, that's why I think that first live event was, was just weighs so much to make that man. It, it definitely was really tough, and um, then to come back and, and I I laid down in clubs. Uh, I did not play well in clubs that year, but then I made the man challenge, which was pretty much equally as hard to make uh, as the man classic, and I was the only person that made both the man classic live event and the Madden challenge live event. Then Ultimate League lost the game to Journey to go to the Final Four. Journey fucked me up. Uh, I lost that game. So I definitely had, uh, did not win any championships, made one Final Four, uh, made the Final Six or whatever. I made it out of groups in the Madden Challenge, uh, made the Final Six of, or the Final Eight, or the, yeah, the Final Eight of Ultimate League. So I really, in over $50,000 in Madden 18. So I really had a good Madden 18. Not great. But it was really good after winning, having, you know, the second best Madden 17 you could have. So that that's why I put myself up there. Uh, it's tough not having a year, not playing this year. It really hurt because uh, I feel like I would have made, you know, 20, 30,000 by accident this year. Uh, so that's pretty much why I put myself fourth. But like I said, four and five is probably me and problem, whatever you, way you want to put it. Uh, and then number three, I got Kiv. Kiv, and what's crazy about Kiv and Journey, and even Skimbo, man, so, but all these guys, like, if they didn't win, they lost to each other. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like that's, you know, the one thing about Kiv is that he lost to Skimbo a lot. And he lost to Skimbo in absolute hell games. 
you know, and we're going to, that's one segment that I'm going to bring during the summer is the best man games at MCS. And Kiv and Skimbo probably have four or five of them, honestly. And if it wasn't for Skimbo or, you know, Drenny, then Kiv would have had this much more success. And same thing for Drenny, man. If he didn't lose the Kiv or Skimbo, he would have had this many more belts, you know? So, so the, the best thing about these top three players is that when they lose, they lost to each other. It's not like they laid down, other than Drenny losing to DJ Llamas. Shout out to DJ Llamas. It's really cool because these guys really only lost to each other. And, and you could look at the people they lost and be like, damn, that guy, Kip, could have had X amount more belts. Skimbo could have had X amount more belts. Or which, or uh, Drenny could have had this many more belts. So it uh, definitely was, definitely, uh, Kip is my third player. Madden 18 championship. Uh, Madden 17, he was, he was a pro- I mean, I don't know what he thinks. But Madden 17, I thought Kip was outstanding in Madden 17. I think both games against Skimbo, uh, especially the Madden Challenge game against Skimbo, I, I, I fully believe that Kiv was the best player in the Madden Challenge. Um, the Madden Challenge, Madden 17, I thought Kiv was the best player. And, and Skimbo just played a good game, played as good as he could, held on and beat Kiv in that game. And uh, same thing in Madden Bowl 17. Kiv was really good. The game came down. I believe Skimbo was down two possessions in the fourth quarter, and the game came down to a chuck in the, in the end zone, and, and Skimbo broke it up. So Kiv had two crushing losses to Skimbo that really helped, you know, stopped him from making more money and possibly winning more belts. But I think there's no doubt about it. Kiv is is pretty much locked in the number three spot. Uh, so I mean, pretty much everybody's listed to be the number three spot. Number two spot is getting close, but number two is Journey Man. Uh. Drenny, the last two years has been the number one player. If you combine 18 and 19, Drenny is the number one player. Uh, without a doubt, I mean, four finals in the last two years, losing to Kratobin in overtime on a one-hitter one quitter in overtime, uh, losing to Kiv. It came down to one last play into the end zone. Uh, so just you talk about what ifs, Drenny could what if himself to four belts really uh, in the last two years. So, I mean... I, I think it's as close as ever as far as um uh as far as one and two. Drenny has been dominant the last three years. Uh he's been fabulous. Uh and listen, I mean I I it's rare that like a player is that impressive to me, but sometimes watching Drenny play is really impressive, man, and, and it's exciting to watch him play. Um play the game i i don't think matt skimbo's man 17 was he was by far the best player in man 17 and and he was by far the best player in man 17 by a wide margin i don't think journey has anything compared to man 17 uh but he's definitely on his way and it's really close but to me i mean you just got to look at two belts to three and i think skimbo still has the number one spot um but and Skimbo texted me uh, after the tournament. He said these kids are catching up. That's what he said, and he and he was kind of disheartened. Uh, I'm Pat's boy. You're absolutely right. Journey is doing all that to, in spite of his parents uh, not allowing him to play video games. That's crazy. Uh, and then the number one, we got Skimbo three belts. Uh, it it really it like I said, it's really close right now. Man twenty. I as much as we've been saying Skimbo is the new goat. Man 20, man, Drenny could pass Skimbo. Really could. The one thing that... that I don't know if y'all agree about this, though. Um, is that I, I feel like Skimbo pops Drenny, though. I feel like if they match up, I feel like I like Skimbo every time. Uh, completely different players. It's crazy how different they are. Um... But I just, and that one thing that sticks to me, and like I talked about between True Boy and Joke, True Boy would always beat Joke, and I just feel like Skimbo would always beat Journey. Uh, and we, they played this year in the Classic, and it was really ugly. Um, so that's just how I do feel about it. I, I feel like I might <laughs> versus Journey, uh, bet versus Journey against any other player rather than bet versus Skimbo versus any other player. But if they play head to head, I think. Um, but then what other player do you put in? You just took a player out. Oh, you would take Pavin? Nah, well, you know. Pavin won a lot of money, and Pavin uh, won a belt, you know. 
and um you can't discredit belts that's why skimbo still has three of them things crazy that he won two belts for a combined fifty five thousand dollars i believe i think one was 25 and one was 30 i think that yeah that's 55k uh so that's definitely tough that's <laughs> If every belt was the same, I think Skimbo still does have the most money. But if every belt was the same, um, he definitely would have the most money. So he, um, strafing is in the top. Yes, this is a good question, and strafing is probably somewhere in the teens. Uh, the reason why he wasn't in my top ten, and, and I think these top tens are pretty. I think everybody's going to have a pretty similar top ten, and the reason I didn't put strafing in the top ten is because. See here, Strafing has just made Club Series. Like, that's pretty much all his money. He won 75000 on Club Series. So, you're talking about another 20K. It's just been Club Series. And if we all know, obviously, he was super impressive making that run in Club Series this year. But in the last couple years, Club Series has been nothing to run home about. Um, so, for me, if he'd have made another event, even any other... Madden Classic, any other Madden Challenge, uh, you, know, uh, you know, it's just he hasn't done much of anything other than Club Series, you know. So that's what he definitely is probably because he's been super consistently good, just hasn't made the same type of runs as he did, did one one great run, obviously, but he'd probably be around 15, 16, somewhere around there, really. But is there anybody else you guys would put in this list? I don't even know if I have this list fully fully put together if I can put it together all the way like I said we'll go over it again this is my list I got Joker 10 Pavin at 9 Blocky at 8 True Boy at 7 Ghost at 6 Problem at 5 Me at 4 Kiv at 3 Journey at 2 Skimbo at 1 you know what I'm saying so I don't even know who else like I said true boy is prop true boy is 11 for me um it was tough between him and joke the biggest thing was that uh joke just was super consistent man uh we talked about breakout players last week but the rookie of the year this year for me was Kratobin it had to be I mean he won a belt or Pavin well, I forget exactly who I put but if you want to check out who I thought rookie of the year was last year listen to the podcast episode number 29 this is episode 30. That's a good question. As far as knocking in the top 10 or who do I think will break out next year? That's some of the predictions. A prediction, MCS prediction will probably be somewhere in July or something like that. Um, but, I, I mean, obviously, Clef. I don't know if he counts as somebody that's going to pop up randomly. I, Clef is Clef, is Clef really, but... 100K is a lot. I don't know. Stop. I hate when people say 100K. You played three years. I made 100K. Hey, man, that's 100K more than y'all made in the MCS. That's how I feel. You know, and we would have played. And what y'all fail to realize is that we would have played this regardless, man. We we would play each other for $10, $20. Whatever. We just love playing the game. And if I had the opportunity to make 100K to make a skimbo made a quarter million dollars in three, probably more than that since the Madden Bowl payout. You know, and to sit here and say, there's no development. No, nah, it's pretty damn dope that all these players have made over six figures in the last three years. So even if you take $110 or 110000 divided by the three years, you're taking, what, $35,000 a year just on just on your tournament winnings, which isn't bad. And a lot of people that make $35,000 a year are the assholes that are home saying, oh, that's not a lot for playing a game, blah, blah, blah. Nah, that's, 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 it, 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 it's a good amount of money, man, and as much as, you know, I'm not rich. I've never been rich. Some of you guys might be rich. Some of you guys might make a quarter million dollars a year. I don't know. But I will tell you, this changed my life, making that much money, being able to make a career out of this, being able to invest my money in myself, in my Madden career. It absolutely changed my life. Uh, if you don't do anything with the money, it might not change your life. But me personally, it changed my life. So I will always say $100,000 is a lot of money. I don't care if you make it over six years, or you make it over one year or six months. I always feel like it's a lot of money, but money is all per perspective. It's all relative to what your life is like. But I will tell you right now for a regular human being, a regular guy that just played video games and worked. Absolutely. This money changed my life. I cannot speak for the rest of the people. I cannot speak for Skimbo and his horses and his white picket fences. Maybe it didn't change his life, but me, myself, it absolutely changed my life. So from people say there's not a lot of money. I, I think that's super ignorant because it's just all relative, man, you know? 
Där sa That's how I feel about it I hate people that just uh, You know uh, We can be making no money You know And I, I hate to be the ones Like yeah EA Be on some Thank you EA shit Because there's a lot of stuff They do wrong And a lot of stuff I don't like the company about But uh, the fact that the, uh, There's You know What we looked at Just eight people That made over 100,000 Now there's probably So many more That made over 100,000 How is that How can you look at that And not be cool And how How can that this is just how I feel about it. how can you look at something like this, like where you look at people making over a hundred thousand dollars and say that's not a lot. Like this shit to, for me, I I, I mean I, maybe Kev is super rich. Maybe you know what I'm saying he always had Gucci jackets and he always had all this stuff. Maybe problem you know, maybe I mean it, it, this is problems life. This type of shit made maybe not the tournament, but Madden made problems life. You know what I'm saying? That that's made him who he is. Journey, I hate, Journey is from Albania. He has, he sleeps in a twin bed. You know what I'm saying? They speak Babushka and his family. You know what I'm saying? Of course, this shit changed during the Journey life. This is Journey's life now. This is life changing shit. And for his little crabs in a barrel to sit here and say some shit like, oh, well, man, that's not a lot of money. No, suck a dick. This shit is life changing. Period. You know what I'm saying? I just, I hate stuff like that, man. You know, and so nothing more ignorant than people just hating. Just, 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 just saying some hating shit is not a lot of money. <laughs> okay, well I'll continue to take this hundred thousand. I, 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 me, Chris McFarland, I'm happy over here. Yes, I'll take twenty thousand dollars for twenty. Yes, I'll take eight thousand dollars for winning a couple games of Madden. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Please, may I have some more? Yes, I'm fine with that. Like y'all, yeah, yeah, it's just corn balls, man. Just mad, angry people that say negative things about this money. Yeah, I, God forbid. I wish this was three times as much. I wish I made four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, then I'd be talking way more big shit. Then needed gaming would be way bigger. You know what I'm saying? It would be enormous. I'd be doing so much more shit for man. But for what it is, it's it's pretty damn good. You know what I'm saying I always hope it is. You know what I'm saying. And it'd be the people that <laughs> it'd be the people that are just crumballs that just just hate on it. And I just I just hate people's mentality, man. There's there's no reason to have a bad mentality. I'll tell you guys this, man. There's no reason to have there's no reason to be negative in life at all, other than you're miserable with yourself. Period. Journey is not Journey will be fat one day, but he too skinny to get fat in one year though. It's gonna take like thirty year old Journey might have a beard and, and receding hairline. I mean, you know what I'm saying it might be. That's awful, man. It's just like and, and the thing about the MCS, which is cool. As much as we talk about man, we want something for the man. The fact we all making some decent money. If you put. If you're like a top 30 man player, top 50 man player, you probably made 20, 30K from playing Madden. Now, here go. Come on, chat. Come on, YouTube. 30K is a lot of money. Blah, 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 blah. Listen, I will tell you this, man. All these guys on this list would play this game regardless whether we were playing it for $20 a game or I done played the shit out of Madden for free. If I made a million dollars, you could divide it by if I if my if this list said a million dollars for W, right? And you divided it by the hours that I have played John Madden football since my life, it's not worth it. <laughs> no. I probably make two dollars an hour, even if I made a million dollars. It's just it's just crazy how you could ever hate on it, really, honestly, man. That's all. But I don't want to get into this, man. I done talked about the crabs in the barrel. The man community is full of crabs in the barrel. And I will honestly tell you, they're really not in the competitive community, man. They really aren't. Us us competitive guys, we're really not crabs. I think we're kind of happy with everybody. Uh, man, I've been playing man forever. <laughs> if, I got paid, if I got paid a dollar for every man game I played, I would have made more money than I... I don't know. If I made 140... Have I played over 140,000 games of man? I don't think so. I don't think the man the man community is that toxic. Our ours isn't. I'll tell you that. Yeah, Vilma will listen. If you want to watch Vilma play, tune in this Sunday because I am commentating, and he will either win or I will, he will get. I will flame the shit out of him on the mic. It will get bad. Don't what's up? Uh, but yeah, this was the Needle Podcast episode thirty, man. 
uh, 30 straight years. Uh, and I, I will tell you guys, man, I feel like the, the competitive man community is as close as ever. And most of that is contributed to Jacksonville. I mean, I, as much as it sucked and it, it ruined my life, it changed my life. It has definitely made the man community extremely closer, the competitive side. Like, I feel like I'm tighter with everybody that was there, everybody that I experienced that with. I feel like I'm even better friends, and I will always be friends with those guys. And it has made us, you know, less negative. It has made us way more positive. And, and one thing that uh, that we talked about when it happened was that uh, try our best to make it a positive thing. And, and when we look back on it, man, I, I think it, it's hard to ever say it would be a positive thing, but we'll be able to look back and say we made the best of it. I think that's, that's what we'll be able to say is that it did not ruin us, and we made the best of it, really. That's pretty much why what I want to be able to say. And that that's why I feel like the competitive community is not toxic. I, I don't think it is at all. I think the people that can't get into the competitive community or or aren't good enough, to get, those are the toxic people. And, I, and another thing I'll tell you about this is anybody can be in a competitive community. There is nothing stopping you from joining the Twitch chat to joining these podcast chats to being in Drinny's chat to being in Problems chat, Clef's chat, Whoever streaming a money game, you can be in their chat talking, gambling. You can always be a part of this community. We do not keep anybody out of this community, man. Whether you want to, whether you want to play and compete, or you just want to be a guy in the chat, be a member of it. There's so many opportunities for you to join this. It's not, it's not as you know. There's nothing stopping you from being a huge part of this community, man. And and, and honestly, to me, the people I see. That you know emulate that the most is one is Jaybird, who Jaybird I had no no idea who the hell Jaybird was, but Jaybird loves Madden, loves competing, loves playing. Jaybird is not that damn good. He's pretty damn average. I would, like he, he, honestly, he's pretty shitty, really. Like he really is. But he's a good guy and he loves Madden and he's in the chat all the time and he really pays attention to it and, and he's a bigger part of his community as anybody. Honestly, like, and so that just tells you guys that, bro, you can be a part of this and, and everybody's cool with them. And, and obviously it's going to be some weirdos that hate on somebody trying to get in the community. But, you know, he's here, you know, because he likes it. And there's a lot of y'all out there. I get that question all the time. How can I become part of the Madden community, man? How can I get take that next level in the competitive Madden? And, and my number one thing to you is the Twitch chat is, is it. You know, especially this time of the year when the Twitch chat is not flooded with people wanting to learn how to play, not flooded by people that want daily drops, just full of, uh, it's probably 100 to 200 people that love Madden that watch it all the time, all days of the week, and uh, they just continually be in the Twitch chat. I think that's the first step to being part of the competitive community. And like I said, the other person I, I, I think just popped out of nowhere between Twitch and grinding the game is Monkey. Like, I didn't know who the hell Monkey was. Now Monkey's good at the game, and he's in a Twitch chat all the time. So it, there, there's really nothing stopping you from being a part of this community, man. And don't be intimidated by it. You can get into it. Because I know, dude, there's not 200, 300 people that want to be good at man. There's way more people than that, man. And I want you guys to know that it's here, man. It really is. It's definitely a spot. It's definitely going to be a spot for uh, any one of you guys to join if you just put forth the effort. The Twitch chat's the spot to, to start, honestly. Uh, we are not worse than Jay Bird. I just said that he's a pretty average to shitty Madden player, but he's a huge part of his community, you know, because he wants to be, and he knows more about most of this shit than me. I, Jay Bird is my statistician. When I need dates and info, Jay Bird knows it all. But, but that's what I'm saying, man. Uh, that's probably the biggest question I get is how do I – Become part of the community. Twitch chat is number one. Speaking of Twitch, that twitch.tv slash dub dot YouTube. You hit that link. Watch these podcasts live 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, every every Tuesday for 30 straight weeks. It will be 31 straight weeks next week. I have to think of a topic, man. And one thing I want to have on the show is a bunch of YouTubers. I'm going to have a, I'm going to have a podcast with CC and Skomo, man. But the biggest thing is like, what content could competitive players and YouTube guys really talk about? I'm thinking more of a wish list type thing, uh, or we could talk about not even doing Man 20 wish list. It could be a. I'm thinking the difference in what a YouTube person looks for in a game and what somebody competitively playing a game looks for, 
Also, somebody creating content and strategy for the game, what do they look for? So you kind of have a different view of what, because I feel like, I, I just feel like YouTube people just look for, I mean, you're just looking for the next video to blow up and make you hella money. It's not necessarily that you love playing Madden. You just look, this is what the hot content is. Let me go ahead and get on that. So it definitely could be something good. Uh, good to compare with those guys, man. I definitely want something entertaining and something that, you know, can get different people's opinions in there, really. Get Gut Fox. Gut Fox could be a good, uh, there we go. But anyway. This was the new podcast episode 30, man. Uh, 30 straight weeks. I appreciate all your support, man. I'm working on some big sponsorships. I'm probably bring you guys more news next week. Uh, looking to partner myself and needed gaming with a couple companies, a couple websites, a couple things that, you know, give you guys some offers for different merchandise, different websites you guys can use so on and so forth. But I've definitely been working hard right now. As I said earlier in the show that, you know, trying to grind and prepare not only for the summer, but for man 20, man 20 is going to be a huge year. For myself and Needed Gaming, everybody involved, we are, as a whole, going to take the next step in this esports stuff. Uh, but, like I said, this was Needed Podcast episode 30. If you're on YouTube, hit that like button and let me know if my top 10 was cool. I thought it was pretty good. I don't think it's as cutthroat. Maybe I should make a top 25. That's when we really start talking shit between, like, between, like, 5 and 25. Everybody wants to be higher. So, I think the top 10 is pretty pretty cut and dry i think there's there's really not too much to argue about it uh some of it comes down to what do you value more wins and you know championships consistency whatever it may be so comment below on what your top 10 was hit the like button if you're on soundcloud hit i don't even know what you can do on soundcloud but hit a like button comment below everything you know this was needed podcast episode 30